Hi, it's Brenda. I'm just going to give you a rundown of what my speech was because I know you couldn't see it earlier in the video. I was talking about potbelly pigs. And the reason why I talk about potbelly pigs is because I have one as a pet. I've had her for two and a half years now and she's 75 pounds and she's fully grown. If you take care of a potbelly pig and you feed it the proper nutrition and make sure it gets everything it needs, love and care, it will live 20 to 25 years. But you have to remember, a potbelly pig will always be like a two-year-old living in your house. They are curious and you have to keep them occupied. It's like having a kid all the time. But that's fun. Who don't like kids, right? Anyway, you got to keep them occupied. You got to give them the right nutrition. They only go to the vets once a year and that's to get their Ivomax shot for their skin and their skin gets very dry and I can show you what I mean. See here's Tiki laying on the couch and if I scratch her skin you see the little, see? She's got a little dry skin there. She's about due for her Ivomax shot. She's sleeping on the couch right now. This is her sleeping, see? She's napping. But anyway, she only does that, and I trim her hoofs, and I used to do them with a file, and this is the file I used. But now her hoofs are getting too big, and if they get too big, they'll curl under, and then they get hoof rot. So now I use sheep shears, and I'll show you what those look like. These are sheep shears, and this is what I use to trim her hoofs with. Yeah, I know they look kind of scary, right? Well, if I can get them open, there we go. See, that's what they look like. But it doesn't hurt them. It's just like trimming our, our fingernails or our toenails. They have to be trimmed or they'll get hoof rot because they got all that body weight on those little bitty toenails. So they have to be able to walk. They have to be flat. Now for the nutrition side, they eat fruits and vegetables. No meat, no chocolate, no corn. They cannot die. Well, chocolate will kill them, just like a dog. Corn, they can't digest very well, so it makes them obese, makes them fatter. It's too much starch in the corn. Too much fruit will give them hypertension because that's a lot of sugar. But she does eat fruit. She eats watermelon and she eats uh, peaches and strawberries and all kinds of that fruit. She loves spinach. But let me tell you, pigs don't eat everything like you would think. Now the swines out on farms, they eat anything you give them. But potbelly pigs don't. She will not eat broccoli or cauliflower unless I cook it and smother it in cheese. Then she'll eat it. That's kind of tricking her. <laughs> but anyway, she does eat her fruits and vegetables. But for the nutritional side, I give her potbelly pellets, which are these little bitty pig pellets. And they're for her bones and her metabolism. And it helps her growth. So, in other words, it's... It doesn't stunt her growth. It helps her grow. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, they're very loyal. I go to work every day. When I come home for work for lunchtime, by the time I hit the front door, she's sitting at the front door waiting for me. She hears my car pull up in the driveway, and she's at the door before I get there. They're very loyal. I always say, you do not adopt potbelly pigs they adopt you into their herd. Now, if a stranger comes to my door and she don't know who they are and I don't tell her who they are, she will go to the door and charge at them because it's a stranger. It's just like a dog. Everybody has dogs. Everybody has cats. People have iguanas. I know some people that have cows as pets. Why not a pig? A pig learns anything that you can teach them and they learn so fast. When T.T. was a baby, I taught her to go to the back door to go pot when she had to go potty so she could go outside because I was not about to train her to use a litter box, which you can do that like a cat. 
You can train him to use the litter box, but I want her to go outside like a dog. So I trained her to go to the bathroom, to the door, when she had to go potty. Now every time she's got to go potty, she goes to the back door and lets me know she's got to go potty. And she goes outside, and she goes potty. Then she comes back inside. And yes, TT does live in my house. As you can see, she's sleeping on the couch. But anyway, potbellic pigs are very loyal. They're very loving. Um, they're also hyperallergenic. So if you have someone that's allergic to cats and dogs and birds because of the dander, get a pig. They're hypoallergenic. You cannot be allergic to a pig. That is impossible because they don't have dander. There's no way to be allergic to a pig. But it's not all hugs and kisses and playful times. They're like having a two-year-old all the time. you got to keep them occupied. you got to keep them busy. They do sleep. They sleep on oh, average on probably 13 hours a day. She'll sleep, she'll go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, and she's up at 6 a.m. Then she'll take a nap during the day, you know, for a couple of hours, and then she's up from running again. But pot belly pigs are really good. They're wonderful animals. I couldn't have a better pet in my life. You just got to be loyal, and you got to take your time, and you got to take care of them. But anyway, I thought maybe you'd want some information on that. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed my video. Good night.